Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to be working on my emergency well pump system uh, you might remember this from a few videos back I bought this it's a Chinese pump and I want to use it for pumping water out of my well if the water level becomes gets too high I just I want to I want this to be running of 12 volts the emergency system will also work if the power if I have a power failure in my house I will be able to power this from a battery and the big issue has been that I, I have these levers and this is a switch and it connects when this thing comes up it comes two wires comes out of it and now there is no connection and now there is a connection so that's how that works and I have two of them I uh, actually have more than two but I want it be, to be using two of them so that if the I did explain this in the other video but let's say this is the well and this is the water level so the water level will be coming up and it will connect that one but nothing will happen until I'll just turn this around until the water level comes up and connects this one then the pump will start and then the water will be pumped out and this one will go down again and the pump will still be running until it hits this one and that goes down again now the pump will shut off and the water level will start to rise again and this will happen again but i could do it with one and then the pump will start when this is connected and it will shut off when this is down but that's not a lot of water and the pump will be going on and on and on and off and on and off and on and off and yeah that's why i want to do it that way with two of these and i can vary the distance to how much i want it to be pumping out each time i'm not going to be pumping out very much it's just going to be taking off the top a little more than than just one but probably about that much i guess would be okay so let's go to the table and see what I come up with. Okay, I had help on this. My good cousin who has been in more of my videos. I told him about this problem and he was thinking about it and he came up with this circuit for me. I think it's called a holding circuit. Uh, we have a battery here. I'll just put on plus and minus here and 12 volts right there. We have a 12 volt battery. And from that battery, we are powering the bottom switch of these, the one at the bottom. And when that connects, there is connection through here. And there, nothing will happen. But when the next switch, which is the top one, connects, it will power a relay over here. And the relay will turn on two contacts. One of them will be powering the pump the motor here the other one will be powering itself it will keep a connection that keeps it getting power from even though this switch is disconnected this connector will keep the relay on until the the pump down here which is a motor uh, that's why the M symbol is there until the motor dries out the, the well enough to disconnect this switch the bottom one this this drawing is a bit upside down because this is the bottom one and this is the top of these switch things and then it starts all over you can have a look at this diagram and see if it gives you any meaning uh, this is the relay just make a little relay box here and it's of course a 12 volt relay and I just happens to have those here I have a box of different relays that I have removed from all kinds of stuff here's a 24 volt this one is a I think this is a 6 volt no, I have no idea um, I was looking at it before and I found this one which very clearly says 12 volts down here so I'm just gonna be using that one and it has some nice transparent plastic so that you can actually see what's going on inside of there and that's it's kind of nice so I'm gonna be using this one and putting the rest of them back all these relays are, are relays that I have disordered from stuff uh, I've done some videos on that and 
Well, today I'm using one of the pots. I have a piece of test PCB here, and I thought that might be good. It's way too big for this, but um, I want this built so that it can be taken apart. And well, this is really the only component in the whole setup. All the rest is just wiring, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be reusing these for the battery. And, uh, this switch, I don't know. I might keep it in. I don't know if it goes on the pump or the battery side. I haven't decided that yet, but it's a nice to have a switch. I will put this relay in here and we'll cut off a piece of the print and do something so that this can be taken apart. Have a little box here. I've been using this for something else way back. I think I'll be using that again and cut a piece of PCB so that it will fit inside of the box. I think I have a cutter for that somewhere. I'm just gonna uh, get rid of that. I'm just gonna take a piece of PCB that is that fits inside the box and fills it up as much as possible. So I'm gonna mark it a little bit smaller. And I'll cut out that square. And I found a cutter. I hope this is good. Well, this is not important at all, so we're just going to be cutting and hoping for the best. Yeah. This is quite neat. You can measure and hit some holes along the way. There we are. Let's see if that fits down. It fits very nicely down there. So that's cool. The rest goes back to the shelf for a future project. I want all the connections that are going out of the box to um, be using connectors like these so that these are PCB mounted, they go down into the PCB and you can screw in the cables here. And there is quite a lot of cables going out of the box. There is the plus and the minus lead, there is the connectors for the, for the motor and there is one, two, three connectors for the switch. Yeah, there is three connectors. So the, I need a lot of connections going in and out of the box. So I'm gonna be using these so that I can replace them, put something else in. And well, I just happen to have a whole box of them. There's actually so many in this box that they don't fit very well there. So I thought that if I used some of them, I would get rid of some of them too. So I'm gonna be doing that. I just did something very smart. I thought, well, I better test this relay before before I put it in, before I start soldering it. And that turned out to be very smart because I couldn't get this to work. The normal thing is that uh, you see three pins here. That means that two of these are connected at all time, um, except when you put on power on the relay coil down here, it will switch to the other two cables up here. And well, that's the normal thing. But I measured it and I, and I tried it. Actually, I put 12 volt on here and nothing happened. So uh, I was about to throw this out when I looked in the bottom of it. And there is a little coil mark here between these two pins instead. So if I had soldered this on the board, I would never have gotten it to work. Now I know that at least these two are the coils and I can always test out which connections are being connected when power comes on. I put in the connectors, uh, they're just in here, I haven't soldered them yet, but I put on where I want everything. I want P for power, M for motor, and I have switch top, switch T, and switch bottom. So I'm going to be soldering these in and starting connecting everything on the bottom side of the PCB. It looks really ugly, mm, it's probably going to stay that way. Okay, I'm wiring this, I'm battling the, the pump that is pumping out the wheel. 
and also my solo collectors they are making a lot of noise too so right now i'm going through the schematics and i'm just putting all the wires where they have to go it's a little bit of tinkling but it will be just fine ouch so i'm just looking at the drawing here and right now i'm doing started at the battery and I'm, I did the plus leads and I'm doing the minus leads I have one minus going to the to the motor and I'm gonna have another minus going to one end of the coil in the relay so we're gonna ready a piece of wire and I have, it, I have it on a little spool on top of this so I can just use exactly the amount of wire that I need to and we need to sort of this on the minus lead that to the minus lead up there and then I find where it has to go it has to go down here to the to the coil which is down but I'm just gonna be totally sure so I'm gonna take my power supply and do 12 volts and I'm just gonna listen for it if it clicks it clicks that's the right that's the right place. So we're yeah, just gonna measure out how much wire we're gonna need. Well, I do think I have everything wired in now. So we're gonna put this away. And I'm gonna mount some of the devices on here to test it out. And the first thing, well, the switches are really easy because they already have the wires and they're, they're all good to go. And we need the motor and the power connector. Uh, I need to cut that, so yeah, might as well do that right away. So I need to decide which, if I want to be able to turn off the, sh the pump or turn off power. It's gonna be the the power cable that, that I'll be able to switch off. And we have a plus and a minus. Probably need to find out what which is which. So we'll do that really quick. And it's brown. Brown is on. same thing now we have the pump here made the wires a little bit longer it easier to work with there we're about ready to test but well my workbench is a mess so I just wanted to clean a little bit before doing that I'm planning on using the power supply for powering this because with that I can I can tell it how much power it, it's able to use. I can set it to 12 volts and I will do half an amp. That should minimize the damage. And we will power this off. Connect power here. Plus and or minus and plus. Nothing is happening so far. So let's power this on. Not drawing any power and then we have the two switches here so see this is the this is the top one and this is the bottom one so if we start by connecting the bottom one 
that should be the first one to fill up. That's connected. And the top one. And the motor runs. It's not getting enough power, but that's okay. It's enough for testing. So we are gonna connect, disconnect the top one. Nothing happened. We're disconnecting the bottom one. And it switches. So connect the bottom one. And connect the top one. And it runs. This is neat. Now I just need every wires to be extended. I, I think actually the pump wire will be okay. These wires, they need to be different than this. I just fitted it in the box here. That's gonna be cool. I think it's it will fit there nicely. It doesn't really matter if it will fit in the box. I will make it fit in a box or some box. Okay, let's just see this again. This is the bottom one and this is the top one. So first the bottom one will fill up. Uh, that means that it will it will be like this and the water level will come and it will push this up. This is full of air, so that will go up. And there is a switch inside of this one that will um, connect. And the same thing goes up here at the top. It is this way and when the water goes up far enough, that will switch on. And the pump will be running and it just turned on this relay. And this relay will not shut off when this is shut off again, it will only shut off when this one down here turns off again. The, the distance between these two will be the amount of water that the pump will pump out before stopping again. That's very neat. This is rather cool. This project worked out perfectly and it's just one component, a relay really. So the drawing that my cousin came up with is great. It's very cheap in making and I made it just in half an hour, maybe a little bit longer. I had to do some filming as well, you know what I mean? So, but thank you for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again when I put this in something workable. Like I'm thinking about a plastic tube that can go down into the well so I can actually adjust it by pulling it up and down. Maybe having it hanging from the top with a, with a rock in the bottom or something like that. I'm dreaming about that, but have a nice day. Bye bye.